welcome back to Maya's Reviews, a book podcast and blog. If you're new here, welcome, and I hope you stick around. So, it's been a while since I talked to you guys. Uh, it's been a week. I mean, when I first started this, it was like every week. So, it's not that different from my original schedule and what I was originally planning, but I'm not used to it, you know? I'm used to, like, twice a week I record, and it's like I get to talk to you guys twice a week. Uh, But it's been a full week, and that's so weird. And I apologize for this episode getting out so late. I was busy earlier in the day, but it's weird. It's really weird. I'm not used to last-minute recording or, you know, anything like that. But what kept me so busy... (laughs) was not only because I had to read some books, not had to read, but I wanted to. But also, guys, Avila released two new songs yesterday, uh, if you guys didn't know. And I'm freaking out. I don't know if you're freaking out, but I am. And I'm just super excited because it's been like, what, 40, 30 years? Something like that. That's a big time difference. But (laughs) uh, it's been... It's been around there. So, I mean, you guys don't know this about me, but one of my favorite bands, like if I go to my Spotify statistics or whatever, um, if you look at like all time, last six months and last three months, ABBA is in the top three like literally every single time. So, (laughs) which... In terms of my music taste, I'm all over the place, so please don't judge me just on me liking ABBA, because, like, (laughs) I used to be like, you like Dancing Queen, but they have so many better songs than that, so, um, I just bumped into the microphone, so that's great. I'm obviously an amateur now, you know, we're nearly to episode 20, which is crazy to me, uh, and I'm, like, a mess. Besides ABBA, I also just feel like crap, so. (laughs) Today's like a low energy, me trying to hold it all together. Uh, I am stressed, I am tired episode, so that's fun. (laughs) But I'll still try to talk about the novel that I'm reviewing today, which, if you haven't already, definitely check out the review on my blog, Today, I'm going to be reviewing the first novel in this scurry series, I think that's how you pronounce it, by Kristen Cicerelli, which I apologize if I said their name wrong, The Last Nomstra. So, that's the book I'm going to be reviewing today, and I'm super excited. It's been on, my, it has been on my physical TBR for quite a while, probably about a year, uh, <laughs> and i I actually picked up this book, the first novel. Uh, I don't have the two others. I'm pretty sure it's a trilogy. I actually picked this book up because um, Kate's Books, which if you don't know who that is, they are an amazing book blogger. And I think they have a YouTube channel as well. And some of you may know them from TikTok. When I first joined Book Talk, which is like the little book section of TikTok, which is kind of dying right now, but it's fine. Um, that, that was my first social media for the blog. So it was really cool and I felt very welcomed and I kind of like looked up to their posts and their videos. So yeah, if you haven't checked them out, definitely go do it because they are amazing at what they do. Uh, and I get a lot of my book recommendations from them. I'll go on their blog and I'll check and I'll be like, oh, wait, I should read that book. So <laughs> that's how I actually came across The Last Nomstra. It was one of their um, TikToks. And I was like, oh, wait, that actually looks nice. So that's how I got this novel. Um, and a couple others too, I think. So <laughs> if you haven't, definitely go check them out. I will actually, I'll put the link to their blog in the description and, you know, you can go to their blog and follow them because they're amazing. They're, they were kind of my first role model in uh, book blogging, so definitely go check them out. 
so yeah, besides all that blabber, uh, and ABBA, um, <laughs> which I'm always confused whether I say ABBA right, like is it, you know, anyways, today I'm reviewing The Last Namstra by Chris and Cicerelli, so let's go. <laughs> started there is a content warning PTSD murder blood death domestic abuse emotional abuse slavery and insinuations of sexual assault are all mentioned in this novel and as I mentioned earlier thank you so much to Kate's books for making me aware of this novel uh, because I loved it so <laughs> so quick statistics overall and you know through the plot, setting, characters, writing, and memorability, everything was five out of five stars. This was an amazing novel, and it has a lot of tropes and a lot of things that I admire in a lot of books, uh, some of which are enemy to lovers and high fantasy, so, <laughs> and badass female main characters. Just a quick overview. The Last Namsara is a magical novel that leads the reader on an adventure of discovery through the eyes of a badass main character. Think How to Train Your Dragon, but more adult and even better. And like I said, with a badass female main character. The Last Namsara was published by Harper Teen on October 3rd, 2017. And it is the first novel in the Iskari series and is 421 pages in paperback, I believe, which is what I had. So it is a fiction, young adult, adult, fantasy, high fantasy, dragons, adventure, magic, and enemies to lovers novel. All those combined are just, you know, just a straight road to a masterpiece. The book description, in the beginning, there was the Namsra, the child of sky and spirit who carried love and laughter wherever he went. But where there is light, there must be darkness. And so there was also the Iskari, the child of blood and moonlight, the destroyer, the death bringer. These are the legends that Asha, daughter of the King of Fergard, has grown up learning in hushed whispers, drawn to the forbidden figures of the past. But it isn't until she becomes the fiercest, most feared dragon slayer in the land that she takes on the role of the next Iskri, a lonely destiny that leaves her feeling more like a weapon than a girl. Asha conquers each dragon and brings its head to the king, but no kill can free her from the shackles that await at home, her betrothal to the cruel commandant, a man who holds the truth above her nature in his palm. When she's, offer, when she's offered the chance to gain her freedom in exchange for the life of the most powerful dragon of her guard, she finds that there must be more she finds that there may be more truth to the ancient stories than she could ever have expected. With the help of a secret friend, a slave boy from her betrothed's household, Ashima shed the layers of her iskari bondage and opened her heart to love, light, and a truth that has been kept from her. So everything about Cicerelli's characters are perfection. I loved, loved, loved the main character, Asha's badassery and her attitude of taking no shits. And Torwin, by the way, the um, slave boy and kind of like ally that was mentioned is totally adorable and the perfect fictional crush. I think we should just admire Asha and Torwin's enemy to lover's arc because it's truly amazing. Can you ask for anything better? It's perfectly, because what I find really annoying in YA books especially is where you will have, you know, the book is marketed as an enemies to lovers novel and then you'll get to it and it's like the first few chapters, it's like, oh, I hate you. And then like, a few chapters after, they're already kissing and they're already, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever. I don't know. I find that really annoying because when it's enemies to lovers, you don't, it's, it's, there's no switch. You don't just go like, boom, we're friends now. Oh, n just kidding. We're lovers. Like that doesn't happen. That's not realistic. I want some grit. I want some tension. I want some 
huge build up to the lover's arc, you know, like, I don't want it straight away. I guess it's slow burn is what I like, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but this novel did that perfectly and was exactly what I ex wanted from it. So that was amazing. Within the characters, by the way, I'm just going to mention the dragons real quick, which, okay, the dragons, um, especially the dragons that Asha encounters, kind of just like, you know how, okay, so if you look at fan art of dragons, just like, if you look up a dragon art, you're going to see big, scaly, scary creatures that are like also beautiful. Uh, no. In my mind, it was just Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. Like, the big eyes, pretty much puppy dog, dragon. That was literally me. Um, and I was in love with the introduction of the dragons into the story. I mean, they're not only really important in the world of the Iskari series, but there are also, like I said, kind of like essentially dogs. Uh, just big, fiery, dangerous dogs, but adorable nonetheless. Um... And I was actually thinking before this episode, um, and even in the review, I was trying to come up with, you know, something, what, what would I name my dragon? And honestly, I have no idea. Because I'm extra, I looked up, like, Latin names, meaning, like, darkness or whatever, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> so you can see my two choices for dragon names on my review of this novel on my blog. But, you yeah, know, I don't know what I would actually, if I actually got a dragon, first of all, I would probably shit my pants. Second of all, I would cry. And then third of all, I would be so terrified I'd run away. And then after that, I'd sit there in my little cave, huddled up against the cave wall around a little bend so the dragon can't sneak in and see me. And I'd just be like, what am I going to do? I have a dragon. What am I going to do? And then I'd probably just sit there for a little while. Um, and then I'd sit there some more. And then I'd wait till I was absolutely starving, which would probably be like within an hour because I eat a lot. Oh my gosh, which by the way, my house is out of ice cream and I'm in like a little crisis because like I said earlier, I feel like crap. So, uh, ice cream is, like, emotional support in my life. And, like, who needs therapists? We have ice cream. And so, we're out of that. So, I'd probably sit there, get hungry, exit the cave like a dumbass, and encounter the dragon. And then I'd have to think of a name real quick. And it'd be the ho most horrible name ever. And i name it. And then the dragon would just absolutely roast me. Not, like, insult, but, like, full-on flame, you are dead roast. Uh, so that'd be fun, guys. That'd be amazing. Interested in starting a podcast? I bet you haven't heard of Anchor, an app and site that makes it super easy to create your own. Not only is it free, but Anchor also allows you to make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor distributes your podcast for you to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more platforms. Anchor has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and computer. It's everything you need all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started today. So I really, honestly, I could do without a dragon. Like, it sounds cool in theory, but it's really not. <laughs> I would probably, I would probably die of just, like, shock and fear. So, um, yeah. Um, but besides those dragons um there is you know an assortment of characters and all of them are very unique so it was very easy to tell them from each other which I loved because honestly it's hard for me when I read I don't I know people are gonna I don't know like make fun of me for this but I don't see things in my mind it's just straight up like black 
Um, so that's why it takes me so long to read, I think, too, is it's not like this just flow. I have to sit there and think about what these words mean before I can even begin to piece together what is happening. Um, so I can't see what's happening in my mind. So it's very hard for me oftentimes when characters are, like, similar to each other or, like, I don't know aren't described well enough and I literally cannot place who they are oh well that was a yawn guys I'm tired <laughs> I said this is going to be a low energy just kind of like holding stuff together episode I warned you so usually I get progressively louder and more excited um no not today so yeah, I really appreciated that the characters were very distinct and unique because I was actually, like, able to understand who was who, and that was really nice for me because uh, I always struggle with that. I always do. With the writing and setting, so Cicerelli's writing style is just straight-up art, and I mean that literally. I mean, like, not literally, like, I wasn't reading art, but it was art in writing form, and, um... I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was even a book. It was an experience. And uh, it, it was just so poetic and beautiful and deep. Uh, and it really sucked me in, which also helped with me not being able to conjure images in my mind, you witches. I don't know how you... I don't know how anyone does that. Like, how do you just sit there and it's just there? Like, if you look over and you close your eyes, can you, like, imagine... A random person or a celebrity. Can you imagine Harry Styles and Abba sitting next to you? Because I literally can't. It's impossible for me. And I'm sitting here looking super dumb because my eyes are closed and my head's tilted to the side. And I'm trying to imagine Harry Styles sitting next to me. But it's not working. So, you guys are just straight up magic. Good for you. Um, but... Yeah, so the story itself takes place in the kind of anti-dragon, not kind of, like, full-on anti-dragon kingdom of Fergard, which I probably am pronouncing all of this wrong, um, but you're welcome. Which, Fergard, Asha is kind of just rejected by those around her for a mistake she made as a young child in telling stories to dragons, and, um... The dragons, they, like, feed off the stories, I guess, and that's how they're able to breathe fire. So this big dragon just came in and was, like, fire everywhere, burned down Fergard, yay, yay. Um, and now they all hate her, so that's great. Um, but the mythology and background is heavily focused on in this novel, which, for me, can be really off-putting at first because, I don't know, it's... See, I can't put into words what gets me into a novel. It's it's so frustrating, but it's like it has to be the perfect mixture so I can get a good um I don't know, like introduction to the book. So it's like, oh, this is what the rest of the book is going to be like. Maybe I don't want to read this. But um I did stick it through because it, this book had been on my bookshelf for literally forever. So I stuck it through, and I read, and it was amazing, but definitely at first it was off-putting, um, but it does set the rest of the series up for a mythical adventure, um, and like I said, the world building, I mean, I've said this multiple times in mul many episodes, world building is one of the most important things to me, because if you don't have, you know, people in real life are a results of their environment and if you have a high stress a really hardened environment and world you're gonna have a really hard and uh stressed character and you know world building really impacts characters I feel and so it's really important to me personally that books that I read have good world building because that's what really gets me into a novel because, like I said, it's very impactful on the characters, and the characters really impact the plot, and, you know, the setting is a huge part of that. Um, I just thought someone was behind me in my room. You know what? If I get killed on air, it's fine. 
Um, we, we tried. We tried our best, and I died right before the Q&A episode. <laughs> Which, that, by the way, is going to come out next Friday, so we got a week. There we go. Um, and maybe you'll have two episodes next week. I have no idea. It's not like I make my own plans or anything, so. But yeah, the world building in this novel is very realistic and heavy and gritty, and it's just like, it's dark. It's like a gray on like a scale of vibrant to death. <laughs> it's like, it's this perfect mixture of just realisticness and full-on fantasy that is this evil dark kingdom that you're trying to escape and it really drags you in and I really loved it um well I love how when I'm like feeling at my worst I'm really deep and really thinking about these novels and then when I'm not, when I'm perfectly fine I'm just like okay guys that was it see you um but I, honestly, the setting was just perfect for high fantasy lovers. And this is why, honestly, high fantasy is one of my favorite genres is because of the world building majority of the time is amazing. And your characters and plot are amazing. I mean, with high fantasy, you can do whatever you want. You can have a little bit of mystery in there. You can have enemies to lovers. You can have friends to lovers. You can have, you know, you can have dragons and mermaids. And I think high fantasy is just, uh, it covers such a broad spectrum of books that it really, you know, you can find something in it that you love. Uh, yeah, that's my uh, babble on high fantasy. Uh <laughs> But the plot, so the adventure that Asha embarks upon to prevent her marriage to King of the Assholes is not only filled with pain and struggle um, and courage, but also love. And, you know, the twists and turns in this novel are a very promising start to the series. So a lot of the adventure that Asha has to embark upon is really, you know, tough on her. And it's all this hu one huge mission that she keeps getting derailed off of. Uh, which at first, I know, sounds like really basic. You're like, oh, I've read this so many times in so many books. But I can promise you it's so, so much different than, you know, other books. This book is amazing and it's so unique. Um, by the end of the novel, I was staring at my wall, trying to comprehend how I became so easily sucked into this world of betrayal, magic, and adventure that I had read about. Uh, and like I said earlier, the world building, the grittiness, and the heaviness in this novel that is all that also lets you enjoy being there is just so magical and perfectly well done uh, that it's fantastic. So, yeah, I'm so excited to read the next novels in this great trilogy, and I really, really hope I will be able to get them soon, because it's amazing. It's re it really is. Uh, and it's a solid start to a high fantasy series that will leave readers intrigued, but also satisfied. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not rushing to read the next book, but I'm definitely like, I need to read the next one. Um, you know, it's not like, oh my gosh, when I read it, Imposters by Scott Westerfield, uh, and I was like, hello, what? Uh, that's where it ends. Okay, well, you know what? I want to die. And then it's two years later, and I still haven't read Shatter City, even though it's on my bookshelf. <laughs> um, but that's why I'm horrible at commitments, so... I don't know. This book was just fantastic, and oh, it was so beautiful uh, and gritty and just amazing. Um, so yeah, I th honestly I think that's it for this review. I I went down a lot of rabbit holes. I talked a lot about random stuff that does not apply to <laughs> the book I was reviewing today, but uh, that's fine. Just you know what we'll do. Let me know. For those of you who are listening, which I love you so much, um, let me know what you would name your dragon. Either in the comments of my review of The Last Nomstra on my blog or on my Twitter. Just go on there and, um, you know, let me know. 
type your little dragon name in the comments of the post announcing this episode or even, you know, um, I was gonna say, <laughs> uh, on the, U on YouTube, you can go and find this episode. It, it should be in my beacons, which is in the description. Um, and if you're listening on YouTube, just go down to the comments and type and tell me what your dragon was, because you know what, maybe I'll mention you in, um, my Q&A episode, or my next episode, if I think your dragon names are really awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, or my TikTok, hey, I can make a video where I'm like, hey, these are what people said their dragon names would be. So, uh, yeah, just let me know. That'd be really awesome. But, yeah, I think that's the end of my review of The Last Nam Sarah by Kristen Cicerelli, which is the first novel in the Iskari series. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please check out my blog, Maya's Reviews, at mayagreviews.wordpress.com. You can also find me at Maya the Bookworm on Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, BookBub, and Book Sirens. I'm also on Tumblr at Maya Reviews. If you want me to review your book or want to come on the podcast to discuss a novel, maybe even just reach out to me, you can email me at mayagbookreviews at gmail.com. I do ask that if you are reaching out in regards to a review request, interview, collab, blog tour, or anything publicity related, that you check out my publicity request page on my blog first and then email me. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading!